Hello, and thank you for joining us to talk a bit about security monitoring with time series data. I'm Darren Fisher, Security Tools Manager for Influx Data. At Influx Data, I get to build security tools with InfluxDB and all of our tools. Prior to that, um, I've had a varied career, from tech support to director of security. I've worked for software companies, ISPs, telcos, banks, even started, built, and sold a couple of companies along the way. Worked in development, management, mostly operations. I'd say about 90% operations where I spent my career. Love it there. Um, data processing and monitoring have been constants throughout this. And that's when I started coming up with the, it's all just data. Sort of thinking about this and we're producing data, we're storing data, we're moving data, we're debugging data, we're compiling data. Uh, it's all just doing more with data. And with all of this experience, it's not, I get the opportunity to wrap all of this experience together and help develop security products. And hopefully they're useful too, not just fun. Okay, and today we're gonna to talk a bit about um, time series data. I'm gonna use authentication data as an example because that's what I've been really, really focused on lately. Um, neck deep, so to speak. Uh, we'll describe a few of the metrics we need to collect how we get the data we need. And then finally, um, what do we do with it? Normalizing, correlating, and analyzing, visualizing. What is it really, really used for? Um, some of the first steps in finding anomalies in network and device behavior, as um, Nate Fick, formerly of Endgame, put us so eloquently, is to organize that data into a collection of time series. Um, time series data is utilized across numerous areas, medical, financial, climate, operations, these are just a few. And recently I've been working on detecting authentication issues across our SaaS providers. We're a SaaS first company utilizing at least 100 separate service providers at any given time. And this can make auditing user activity pretty difficult. Um, it, our, we've got an ever-changing attack surface, so it's a pretty unique well, not new. It's a unique time, I should say. I'm not the only one doing this, obviously, but it's definitely a unique time <laughs> with the history I've had. Um, activity and authentication tab attempts are a good time series set of events. The data fits well into our time series database. Um, we can, and we also can simplify these easily into basic count metrics. And I just love creating new data from existing data that was produced from other data. Actions create events, events become metrics, metrics become patterns. Can you see, it's all just data. So, um, and in time series data, it's, there's a few fairly unique, I'm not to say unique, but specific characteristics um, with this data. Um, first, we have timestamps, as granular as they need to be. Uh, right now, we can go down to the nanosecond pretty easily. Uh, it's also a very, very consistent key. Um, we see huge volumes of data with time series. Think about a single server and a single metric. Yeah, let's go with port, you know, low frequency, one, one metric per minute. That's still 1,440 a day. Most servers have 80, 90 metrics they're looking at. Say we've got 1,000 servers, and each of those has another two, 300 containers. It starts to add up really fast. Um, think about electrocardiograms every second. That's still 86,400 per day. Then we can get into sub-second. Um, high volume credit card transaction services, five, 10,000 per second. Um, large providers, say like Wayfair, they're pushing in over a million points per second. It's a lot of data coming in really fast. And this data is very, uh, can be very real time and time sensitive. You're looking at software tracing, which is really important to keep in a time sensitive fashion, uh, keep that up and running stably. Utility tracking down to the sub millisecond sometimes on the much power people are pulling down in certain areas. We've got a lot of live medical tracking in today's world. You, when you used to have to spend all your time in a hospital, you can now go home and be monitored. This is very time sensitive if there's a problem. Uh, it's really important to keep that keep that time sensitive and make sure that we're keeping real time. The volume just gets huge really fast. 
I kind of skipped over the generating of metrics and events because um, we're looking at all a time series consists of both regular or metrics. These come in every second, every minute, uh, the same data every time. It's very, very consistent. Um, and events, on the other hand, are irregular. They come in when they need to happen. Um, may get 10 in a second, may get one every five minutes, um, but they do come in, you can, but you have to convert these or normalize these down into metrics. Um, system metrics are usually generated every X number of seconds, CPU, network, et cetera, and say like login attempts, they're going to occur in consistent times across the board. Um, but we need to be able to account for all of this. And then our data is going to tell us our story. Uh, first, we have to get through drinking from a fire hose. This is an amount of data coming from different directions, parsing, checking, testing, analyzing, moving, et cetera. Um, just huge amounts, drinking from a fire hose. We're going to try to simplify that down into basic metrics. Then we can analyze those. Um, then for our story, we also need to know certain types of information, like the who, what, where, when. Um, what do we need? Who's using this, a user ID, a bot name, an application title, something that identifies what's generating or what's performing the actions. Um, then we need to know what, what actually is occurring here. Is it a login attempt? Is it a network connection attempts, traffic information, port numbers? Did somebody change a key name? Did somebody remove a table? All just basic actions that are being performed. Uh, we wanna know where these are coming from. Uh, IP address, geodata, network segments, um, all these can help us give us some very spe uh, pardon me, specific um, locations, um, but not necessarily in a physical way, but in, in, a, in the context we want to see them in. And then, of course, the whens, high precision timestamps. Uh, well, high precision or even low precision, depending on your use case. With authentication data, minutes are fine. We're not looking at high, high volume constantly throughout the day. There's going to be some spikes, but not that large, even with, say, 100,000 users. Um, it's not too bad there. So as I started, we started looking into, we knew the who, the what, the where. We need to know how to get this information. And we, so we started very slowly. Where is our data? We're a SaaS first company, like I mentioned. And so it's been a bit slow going. Uh, trying to find a lot of the SaaS providers don't even offer it to screen scrape with, let alone programmatically access an API, for instance. Um, so we have to start finding the data. Uh, a lot of the more mature companies, uh, mature tools, uh, GitHub's a great example. They produce a lot of really good information, event information. And so when we found the users that could have this, the, the, not the users, <laughs> The SaaS providers that have this information, we now, now have to figure out a way to get that in well and to be able to manipulate that properly. Uh, so accessing this data, um, we you know, preferably normal patterns, APIs, um, web hooks, et cetera. Um, and that's been working well, but each provider has a different way of doing it, different way of cataloging the information, et cetera, et cetera. Are we gonna push this information? Are they gonna push it to us? Are we gonna pull it from them? And then we get into normalizing this. Not everybody, a name's not a name all the time. Uh, kid have first name, last name, surnames. Everybody likes to do it a little differently. Uh, so then we go through the process of normalizing. Um, and then also correlating. This is where, Today's world's a little bit, I don't, not a good word here for it, but I've had a lot of fun with it because previously, just, okay, go grab the log files. We're all good to go. Don't have to worry about too much of a, a separate context. Um, but now I've got to see who's logging into X, Y, Z, um, and be able to correlate that. Some of, but some of, it use, some of them use IDs like email. Makes it a little bit easier. Um, but not everybody uses email. So what are we using? It's going to be different and have to put sort of a correlation um, engine together. And if you can see from this listing, still all just data. Now we get to paint our canvas. We've got this data coming in. 
we need to figure out what it means. Uh, I like to start out by figuring out what's normal. Uh, the context I'm in now with authentications across SASs, we get some basic information, attempts, who it is, and where it's coming from. Sometimes we can correlate that to geodata. Most of the time we can now, but it's still not, a, not completely reliable, but we use it. And by using our historical information, we can start to develop and see what a normal pattern is. For instance, I, I come in usually from about two to three different IP addresses or where's along on a normal day. I don't travel much, at least not in the last year. Uh, so it's a pretty easy pattern to see. Uh, other users say our sales department, they're bouncing around, they're gonna be in one city one week, another city the next day, even the same day, they're in a couple different cities. So we're seeing a lot of different cardinality between users and IP addresses with them, and that's normal for them. So it's, his, history loves to, or not loves to, oh, bad term there, history really gives us a way to look and put um, current events into a context. What is normal, what's abnormal? Um, so we see a history of password failures, we can provide some guidance to help reduce the false positives really well with these um, historical patterns. And we also have to account for deviations. As I was thinking through this, it's like, how do I determine? I can see what a norm, what a deviation or what's normal. I can see how that deviates from a rolling average. And then it clicks like, well, wait, we've got financial algorithms that do this kind of stuff all the time. So I went and grabbed a Bollinger Band algorithm and um, put it together for what I need. It gives me a good set of standard deviations there. So I, standard deviations over a moving average to be more specific. And then you solve that to taste. Do I want to look at the last five days? Do I want to look at the last seven? How do I want to move that? And that takes a little bit of finesse and we're still trying to figure out um, ways to automate that or make that more dynamic as time goes by. Because um, activity is not static. Uh, so now we're going to look at what, what type of things do we specifically want to look for uh, when we're going through this. Uh, we can. With standard heavyweight SEMs, you're looking at this coming through and you're doing a lot of analysis, but then you have to still produce what the problems are. Now we have a fast way to detect those problems without having to look through all that information constantly. At least we hope we do. Uh, and compromised credentials are a very common entry point for bad actors. So all that together, figured this was a good piece of low hanging fruit to um, use. So, okay, we get to, let's look at a fail succeed pattern. A uh, lot of good indicator, you get a couple fails in a row, then a succeed. For most people without, without a history, that would be a simple indicator. We'd still need more information, but a good simple one. With our history in place, being able to pattern off of that, I can look and see, oh, this particular user um, does this every Monday. They probably have good password habits, and so they've got seven, 1,800 different passwords they have to use. So they couldn't quite remember which one they need first thing in the morning, Monday morning. Uh, and then we get to move into the correlated failures. Uh, one way around, especially in today's world with multi-SAS, multi-provider um, environments we work in, is we can correlate our failures. We can correlate users across the board on 100 different SAS providers if we can get that information. And now instead of say a bad actor decides not to just do a brute force against one server or one authentication service and just move from, just hit SaaS services, um, a different technique. And it's harder to detect when you're not correlating between them because I don't know what so-and-so did. And I, don't, I don't have that information. But now I can see our users across the board going, oh yeah, five different providers, five minutes, all failed. Uh, that doesn't look like a really good pattern, for, especially for this user. Uh, you can see places they don't normally go. Uh, why is this user actually logging into our accounting system when they've never used it before and they're in the engineering department? Um, you know, things like that. And then we could also look for, say, impossible locations. Uh, we, when we do have the geo data for the um, specific, say, airports or whatever, um, where they're logging into. Now we can say, oh, this person, our CEO just logged in from 
San Francisco, and then 15 minutes later logged in from London. Well, yeah, we could force a VPN over there and make it look like that, but our CSC CEO is not going to do that. So there's a problem here, pretty good indicator. Um, we can start looking at a lot of these different patterns now that we're getting this data and being able to stack this and look at it in real time, visualization is unlimited. How do you wanna see this? Do you wanna see um, users information specifically? Do you wanna look at patterns? Do you wanna start messing with this information to see what you can come up with? What experiments? Uh, right now I started looking at uh, cardinality with users to IP addresses. Um, you can see 1.3 is not bad. We've got some skews in there. And then we've got some failure spikes um, that will set off triggers. By being able to see all of this, now we're starting to come up with other ideas. Uh, how, does this, how does this correlation help? Um, are we seeing our, all of our users doing what we expect them to do? Or why aren't they? Um, what are they coming at? What's outside of normal? Um, and with SSOs being um, more prevalent and being adopted very um, rapidly, we're able to see a lot more, a lot faster. Well, I hope that I've been able to give you an idea of how time series can help give you visibility into authentication patterns. I think we've barely started to scratch the surface on all this. Thank you for listening.